Good evening. So, I hope all of you had chances to find the beauty and wondrous ways that God unfolds in our lives and just, you know, stop and have a little bit of a sense of awe each day to just realize how um, God is ever-present all around us all the time. Uh, I know it's been a great practice for me this week, so I hope you found it uh, to be the same for you. Tonight, I wanted to look at this idea of integrating will and surrender over and over again, that all the challenges, all the suffering that we experience humanly arises from false, a false sense of duality, a false sense of there's God and then there's me. There's God and there's them. There's God and the world. And what we teach is that on the unseen side of life, everything is interconnected in the one life, the one only real and true power, which is God. As finite expressions of the infinite, it's, it's extremely difficult, if not, I don't want to say impossible, because we don't use the word impossible <laughs> in this teaching, but it really is difficult to wrap our minds around infinity and how everything Everything, no matter how divergent, how opposite in appearance things may be, everything is connected in the one. And an example of how we would talk about, you know, that personal will, but that there's also God's will and how the two might not be the same. You know, we further talk about in this teaching, a lot of it is exercising our personal will, like really working on our consciousness so we can manifest some of the wonderful uh, experiences that we envision for ourselves, that if we really stand behind those ideas and believe that, yes, indeed, we could have those experiences manifest in our lives, that that can come true. But we also talk about the importance of surrendering to the will of God. It's so confusing. What am I supposed to do? Which way am I supposed to go? The thing is, if there's only one presence, somehow what we call our will must be part of God's will. Now, if we could come to a greater understanding of that, if we could understand that both the idea of being tenacious in pursuing our individual desires and not giving in to the ideas of it's impossible or, you know, that's not for you or for me or whatever, that we, that, that is totally a valid way to go and to be. And at the same time, surrendering those ideas are two aspects of the same process of moving into some greater good. I think that would really benefit us. And, you know, when people first enter into this teaching, I think one of the big draws of science of mind, of new thought teachings, is this idea that if we change our beliefs to really accept some of the greater good that we would have in the past wished for but told ourselves we couldn't have, we can actually manifest things that we told ourselves we would never be able to manifest. And so, you know, we work on our consciousness to find those ways that we imagine ourselves being able to express and experience greater love, greater joy, abundance, health, creative expression. And if we do our work in consciousness to recognize that God is not an infinite love, is not an energy that withholds, that we're worthy, that there's enough for us and for others, we clear the false beliefs that get in the way of manifesting our dreams and desires. So that is really exciting. That's very exciting and it has a lot of appeal. But I think it's important to realize that when we're talking about our will, you know, what we would like, I would really like to manifest, you know, this greater experience in my life, what's really happening is we're feeling God's will for good. We're a vessel through which we feel that impulse of God 
for an experience and expression of its goodness through us, we're seeing a way that that could be realized. We're opening to it. And as we do that, we allow God's desire, God's will, God's impulse for some greater expression of its nature through us to be realized, to be fulfilled. But I think it's also important to recognize that sometimes our finite minds need to stretch. We need to be able to perceive alternative, alternative ways that the good that we are seeking can be fulfilled. You know, sometimes the limiting belief that's getting in the way of us experience our greater good isn't this isn't possible or I can't have it. The limiting idea is actually it has to look like this. If it doesn't look like this, I can't be satisfied, I can't be fulfilled, I can't be happy. And that's where the idea of surrender comes in, to allow the impulse of God for some greater good, for some greater experience of itself than what we've known before, to be fulfilled, but possibly in a different way than we had imagined. How many of us, when we hear the word surrender, kind of cringe, right? It doesn't necessarily have the most positive connotation. You know, oh, let's surrender. It's usually that we're giving into something we didn't want. How many find themselves saying those words, thy will be done? <laughs> Just like, oh my God, what is God's will? You know, and that's where our thinking in terms of duality really trips us up idea that my will is for something I'd like, and God's will could be something that would just be horrific, but for some reason, God would be pleased by it. And here's the most basic flaw in that thinking. Our will, your will, my will, isn't really our will, your will, or my will. We're feeling God's will toward moving toward some greater good but we're limiting it by saying that it has to be a certain way. And when we fall into this pattern, I think it's important to acknowledge that any good we seek is spirit, is God seeking greater good, more of its nature to be experienced and expressed through us. So if, if we need to stretch our minds to some other idea, it's going to be for good. That's all God would ever want is for something that ultimately will feel good, will, from our perspective, be a good experience. You know, being, being finite expressions of God, I think there's, there's a part of our soul that pushes us to open up to good beyond the limiting beliefs of what that good should look like and how it should show up. <clears throat> it's as if, I think, you know, these two aspects of my will and God's will, is as if sometimes when we perceive some new experience we'd like to manifest, a, a different relationship or a new relationship or a healing of a relationship, greater health, a new skill, a new job, new home, our thoughts that come up that say, oh, I could never manifest that. There's a voice of God in us that's saying, don't buy into that, you know? That's me you're feeling, limitless, infinite me, seeking a greater experience and expression of myself through you. Don't give up on that idea. You know, you're feeling me wanting to have that experience through you. Stick to it. And so in those moments, you know, when we're tenacious, we do step into that greater experience we imagine. But other times, I think we're obsessing over that new experience and, and you know, feeling like uh, I can never be happy unless it's this kind of experience. I can never be happy until the relationship looks like this, until I have this job or whatever. And I think at those times, the voice of God, you know, but it's time to expand. It's time to open your consciousness to see the infinite ways. Don't limit me to just that experience. And so in terms of how do we find the balance between that time when it's, you know, good to be tenacious, that part of us that 
really spirit seeks for us to have that courage, that tenacity to stick with it, to open to the experience so that greater good can be um, manifest in our lives. And then the other side of the equation of being willing to just say, okay, I'm willing to let that go for some greater good. I would say the first step is just start where you are. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you have a specific idea of some greater good that you'd like to see manifest in your life or in the world, start with that idea. Do your spiritual work, do your you know, treatments and your meditations, your affirmations. You know, keep declaring that this greater good that you imagine is yours now. And really, again, let's go back to one of the key components of affirmative prayer that Ernest Holmes told us about. Really feel what it would feel like to have that experience. So really feel it. Imagine it exactly how you would want it. And then as you feel that vibration of what it would feel like, tell yourself this or something equal or greater so that you're at the same time allowing yourself to clear the path, uh, pathway from those beliefs that saying that's not possible, but you're also opening up to it could look a different way, but it would feel exactly the same. You know, and I would say if you're also just longing for some greater experience of God's nature, like greater peace, greater balance, greater abundance, but you don't really have an idea of what that's like, again, go back to your treatments and your affirmations claiming that, you know, this aspect of God's nature is here right now and manifesting in your life, and then allow yourself to contemplate ways that it could take shape. You know, and as you do that, if that, those ideas of, yeah, that but, just go back to, wait, in God there are no, but it can't be. Just keep feeling it as yours, and it could show up in that way that you start to perceive. Or, again, you say, in that way, or something greater. So that, again, what you're doing is you're both saying it's absolutely possible in this way, but it doesn't absolutely have to be that way. And that really opens the channels for you to either accept the greater good that was exactly the way you had imagined it, or something that you had never imagined before, but that is equal or greater than the experience you had thought of. And I remember being very moved years back by a woman sharing a story when we were discussing this idea of, you know, that holding on to an idea, but also being open that it could show up in some other way. Uh, she shared how she really came to understand this principle as a child. I, from what I understood, when she was very young, her father had passed away, and her mother suffered from mental illness. And her mother was eventually institutionalized. Now, in those moments where her mother was mentally balanced and healthy, they just had this beautiful relationship. She adored her mom. And so as a girl, when her mother you know, was institutionalized, she said every day, so many times a day, she imagined herself being with her mom and her mom being emotionally, mentally well, you know, being mentally healthy. And she said there was something in her that kept saying, this is possible. It's like she felt that, that voice from within of this is possible. But she also then shared that her mother never recovered. Her mother le never left the institution. However, she was taken in by foster parents. And although the foster system sometimes doesn't work out well for, for some kids, she said these were just the most amazing people who eventually adopted her. Her mom was older than what she had imagined, you know, than her biological mom. She said she was kind of a spunkier version of the biological mom, but she said every quality that she had imagined sharing with her mom was there. They had such 
a close relationship. And it came out of this idea that this is absolutely possible for me to have this experience. And I really believe that that manifestation could have gone either way, that absolute belief that it was possible for her mom to heal and for them to have that relationship, but also the openness to it being a different way. It could have resulted in you know, some, her mother being healed, cured, and being released, and them having that kind of relationship. It's when we absolutely feel that vibration and know that on some level, in some way, this can be realized. And I see it as this possibility, but I'm open to others. You know, that's, that's when we're living in that balance to be able to step into the greater good that spirit is always seeking. Remember, the will of God and our will is both for some greater good for us to experience. So when we realize that deep down, our will is fueled by God's will for greater good, I think then we're able to be tenacious in breaking through those limiting beliefs to manifest the good we imagine, but to also remain open to infinite other versions that the universe has in store for us. So let's take this moment to turn inward. And I'm going to invite you to bring your awareness to some greater good you would like to see realized in your life or in the world. Be with that idea. And allow yourself to feel what that greater good would feel like. Just imagine it. Step into that reality in your imagination. Feel it. And remind yourself that as you can feel that vibration of spirit, if it were more fully manifest the way you would like it, the fact that you can feel it, it already resides in you, in all beings. You're feeling God's will for some greater good, either in the form you imagine it, or some other magnificent way. So allow yourself to sit with the idea that this greater good is manifesting right now. It's birthing itself, either exactly as you imagine it, or in some other way you haven't seen. It already exists in the invisible, and it's materializing in the physical realm. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any sense of God's will and your will being different, thereby allowing the highest good, either your way that you're imagining or some other greater way to be revealed. Just be willing to release that and follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of your will being part of God's will. It's always for good. Allowing yourself to see that good being realized just as you imagine it or some equal or greater way. Just be willing to embrace that. as we now allow ourselves to just feel that will of the divine for greater good and join together in knowing that the impulse of the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible that we call God is ever present throughout the universe it is infinite love, infinite joy, infinite beauty, infinite abundance, infinite good in every way it could be known, felt, and experienced. 
It is the very life that animates each and every one of us and every being everywhere. And so in knowing this, let us join together in knowing the truth of God's presence at the center of some of the challenges that we face as we move through our human experience. So let us know that for anyone that is struggling with the idea of change, that on this human plane, change is always occurring. That life is taking on new forms, new shapes, things disappear, things pop up out of nowhere sometimes. But the nature out of which everything comes into being is changeless. The nature of God is ever present as a changeless, infinite, invisible that existed before we came into this plane that continues on beyond that it is the one life in which we remain connected to all beings and to our loved ones here on earth or beyond. And it is that presence that when something on this earth plane is changing and leaving and we feel unsettled by it, it shows us a way to experience the good that that experience represented to us in some new way. Let us feel the will of God for that vibration of health and wholeness and vitality that is the true nature of that one in all of us to be more fully revealed and to accept it as the truth that everything in this world is being moved into a greater sense of well-being, homeostasis. That is the nature of God. So where there is any experience of dis-ease and discord right now with this worldwide pandemic, we know that the truth of God's health and wholeness lies at the center of that, revealing the pathways for perfect healing, for that perfect nature of wholeness to come forth. Let us also absolutely know that that creative nature of the divine lies in each of us and we each have a unique way of expressing it that is of value to the world. So for anyone that is feeling unfulfilled, challenged, that they are not able to express who they really are, that that nature of God, the will of God moves anyone in that situation into that greater expression of absolute fulfillment, of sharing their unique gifts and talents in ways that are appreciated, valued, in which they are absolutely shown how valued they are as expressions of God. Let us know for anyone experiencing anything like lack and limitation that the will of God is always for its abundance, its infinite nature, to be revealed and known, and it is moving forth and revealing the pathways into greater giving and receiving, to be able to give and receive love and creativity and to absolutely be open to being prospered and supplied beyond need in every way and to generously give back. The will of the one is absolutely moving forth and revealing itself in all these situations. And I absolutely know that the will of the one is for its core nature of love to be more fully known and felt. And so for anyone that is feeling disconnected from love, we know that there's something at the center of their being that is absolutely realigning them right here, right now, to know that they are cherished by the universe as we all are and that they have so much love to share. And so they see an expansion of love for self, for others, for life. And knowing that that impulse of love is always for greater good to be felt and known throughout creation, let us honor that intention and set our own individual intentions in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us remember we're feeling the will of God for more and more of its nature 
to be realized in creation. That God is right there at the center of these situations. And as we know that, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's from a place of absolute gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is already done in the mind of God. And so it is. And together we say, Amen.